afternoon session has just commenced. This afternoon we're going to be talking about uh, scheduling and jobs uh, and then we'll talk about invoicing and then afternoon, after afternoon tea we'll talk about accounting packages, uh, enhancements and what's coming in the structure and support. Uh, keep the questions coming please. Thank you. Over to Matt. Thanks Barry. Okay, so this session is going to cover the scheduler and, and jobs in general, but um, I guess for many of you, uh, the schedule is pretty important. And so we'll, we'll go through the schedule on the management portal first. So the difference between a, a job, uh, it can be one-off or recurring. A recurring job has an ongoing maintenance, but so whether it be a weekly lawn cut or a, a quarterly inspection or an annual termite inspection, whatever it might be, anything that has a recurring nature, we would set up as a recurring job as soon as possible. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, it gets it into the schedule, so you don't have to think about it anymore. And two, if you're using the job types, reminders and notifications and updates and things, all of those can be triggered using um, that recurring job type profile. All right, so let's go and have a look. To access the scheduler, you can either go in through the CRM, and there's a scheduler button, or, and we'll do that, or you can go to the jobs in the main menu, and the scheduler is the second last option. Okay, so there's if you aren't using CRM, you go this way. If you are, then into the CRM and then select the schedule up button, second last on the right hand side. Okay, we good. So this is the look of the scheduler, uh, the typical calendar grid style. Um, the mode that I've got it in at the moment is in, in week mode. On the left hand side you can see there's a number of different options in the top left hand corner, blue button. You can view it in day mode, week mode as we are now, or month mode. Um, there's a little indicator on the right hand side, a little calendar icon between the backwards and forward buttons that just lets you select in, uh, slightly different layouts as well. But traditionally, you'll either look at it in day or week mode for, for quick access. All of your users will be down the left-hand side. Obviously, if it's just you, then there's only one user in there. Um, and across the bottom is what I wanted to spend a little bit of time on to get it right for you. Um, there's a number of different settings. So I'm going to start from the right on these settings. The first one is the video icon. Now, normally that's in the top right-hand corner, as you know. Um, just due to the layout of the scheduler, we've put all, the, all these setting buttons down the bottom. So the first one is the video that you can watch to see how the scheduler works. Next to that is a plus button that enables you to add new users, new user groups, or create a new job by pressing the, the plus button at the bottom. Next to that is a listing of the different job types. Okay, so when you've set up job types, this is the color coding. You don't have to make them different colors, but obviously it helps if you're looking at the scheduler to see, to see what's what. Now, we haven't got some very good examples here, but let me just um, change this job. When, when I'm looking at that job under Blake in the top row, um, by just looking at it, I can see the job number, what type of job it is, the weekly lawn care, the company, which is Brunswick Pedals, and if it has the location, the location will be there as well, the address. This one doesn't have it. If I roll over with the mouse, um, it shows me all of the other job related details. I can see everything else. So all of that's there without having to actually click in and have a look at it. Now in the top right hand corner, you'll see there's got a blue triangle. That is telling me what type of job it is. Okay. So if I go down to look at the job type codes at the bottom, the blue is the weekly lawn care. So without spending any time, once you get to know the schedule, and people are using it all the time, know all the colors and everything else off by heart, I can see that it's a, I can see the job number, the details, where it is, um, the fact that it's a, a weekly lawn care by the blue triangle, and underneath the location there's a, a little a circle that tells me that it's a recurring job, all right? So it's not a one-off, part of a recurring profile, okay? And again, if I hover over, it shows the recurring detail there as well created by recurring job ID 14422. All right, 
The other colour that's significant, of course, is that it's red, and that's telling me the status of the job. So again, if I go down to the bottom menu next to job types to look at the job status, that shows me as, as the job changes its status, the colour of the scheduler item changes as well. So we have set pre preset colours, but you can adjust those and make those colours whatever you want. If you're used to them being a certain colour, then you can adjust those to be uh, whatever colours you want. And so this last one, because it hasn't been completed on time, it's now gone to red as overdue. All right. Um, so this is all being managed from the app. As as the the the, the app user receives the job, it's uh, it's just, when it's assigned to them, it goes green. When it's in progress, the start of the job, it's yellow. When it's completed the job, it goes grey. And if it goes overdue, it's it's red. Now we also have the recurring profiles, which is the light blue at the moment, and the unassigned jobs, which are orange. Now, an unassigned job means that it's booked in, it's expected to be done, but it hasn't actually been assigned to anybody to do yet, okay? And they'll, they'll sit in a number of different places. First of all, at the top of the scheduler, there's a dedicated row for unassigned jobs, okay? And I'll put one up there. So if it hasn't been assigned yet, it'll be sitting up there like that. Also, on the right-hand side, there's another menu to show you the different categories of what's hanging around. And the top menu is unassigned jobs. And I can open those up and see that there's a single unassigned job to be allocated. And I can also see if there's any recurring jobs to be allocated. All right? The reason why there's that sub-menu on the right is that in the scheduler, you're only seeing what you can see, whereas the menu on the right will show you all of the unassigned jobs, not just what you're viewing on the page. Okay. So when a, a job has got to be assigned, this, you can just grab it from the unassigned row, slot it into whoever's got to do it and when they've got to do it, and that will automatically ping the app with a new job notification, and they can move in and complete the job. Okay. Um, other information just while we're on the scheduler. On the right, on the far left-hand side are the settings. So everybody wants to use their scheduler in different ways and see different things and not see different things. So we've tried to cover off as many of those settings as possible uh, and we continue to, to make changes to it and add features to it to make it more effective for you. First one, you can select whether it's AM or PM or in 20 hour, 24 hour format. Underneath that, you can set your business hours. So you just change the first and second marker to adjust when you want to start your day and finish your day. And then the option above that is to either show all hours or only show your working hours, okay? And this is all about maximizing screen space on the scheduler as well. If you don't work Sundays, then don't, don't show Sundays on the scheduler, for example. If you're only working seven till five, then why show from midnight to 7 a.m.? Um, the next one underneath is exactly, exactly that. You can define what days of the, of the week you want to show. Underneath that is the time intervals. And then the snap duration, which is the, is the slots of the um, jobs as you're adding them. And then you can maximize the width uh, and the window size at the bottom by, by adjusting that. Okay? So that's arranging the format and the look and feel of the scheduler to, to suit you or whoever's using the scheduler in the business. Next to that is the filter, just enables you to minimize and, and only look at one person at a time or one user group at a time. You can, if you've got, uh, 10 staff or whatever, you can divide them up into different user groups based on their region or the type of skills that they've got or the type of role that it is. So you might have a, a technical support team or a sales team or a maintenance team or whatever it is, and you can, you can divide the users up into those different groups. If you're going to have more than one person working on a job, once you've assigned the job to somebody, if I did, that, that job there is assigned to Blake at the top, I can just go down to Bob underneath and grab the plus button and drag it onto the top, and now you can see that now Bob is also associated to that job. The primary user is a dark red. Everyone else, if I'm adding more people to that job, will be a tint of the original color, okay? And then if it moves for one, it will move for all of them as well. Um, the other things that we can do is um, look at this in different modes. So across the top on the right hand side, you can click to create a new job, but you've also then got different views of where these 
uh, I've had a look at it. We're in scheduler mode at the moment. You can go to full map mode or you can go to hybrid, which is half map and half, um, half scheduler. And then just click on the marker maps and that will show you the jobs for that user for that day. And uh, there's no address on that, so it's not going to show. But if there was an address, it would show. And the colors on the map will also match the status of the jobs too. So if I could see that job, it would be red and it would have a blue outline so I can see that it's over, overdue and it's um, a weekly lawn care job or whatever it might be. Okay, and then map is just full map mode. But most people tend to either use it in hybrid as we have it here or just in full scheduler. The other way to view jobs is in list mode. So we'll just go and have a look at that. So this presents all of your jobs in a, in a sort of data table or a list mode. Um, it looks fairly complicated just in terms of the different colors and things, but it's designed really so that you can get a, a really clear, quick snapshot of what's going on. If I go quickly across the columns, ID gives it a job number, whether it's been confirmed by the client or not, you don't have to use that, but it's there. The name of the job, the job type, contact and location, job number, priority in terms of high, low, medium, or whatever, a purchase order number if there's one attached. You can see the value now that we've added so that you can add a value to a job and, and report on that. Um, date, who it's been assigned to, what its current status is, uh, the edit, to edit the job details, and then to view it in the scheduler. If you click on the scheduler button, it actually takes you back to the scheduler, makes the whole thing black, highlights the job that you've clicked on, and then the screen will go white. So you've just identified exactly the job that you've clicked through from. Um, okay, so we'll go back to the list mode. Now there's a couple of things that I just want to show you here that will be useful for you. At the moment you can see there's tabs across the top. We're currently in active jobs mode. So this is showing all of your current active jobs. The next button across is recurring jobs. So every recurring job profile that you've set up will be listed here. <coughs> okay. Now for anyone in mowing or pool inspections in particular, anywhere where there's seasonal work where you might be mowing lawns twice in, in the summer and three times in the winter or vice versa, this is where you can adjust on bulk those types of jobs. So the way you do it, if you, if you have a look, um, when I'm looking at the recurring jobs, it has the interval type as one of the columns, weekly, and then it's got frequency of one, okay? So they are my weekly jobs. The one underneath it is doing the jobs every three months. So what I want to do first of all is filter the list to identify all of my weekly jobs, let's say. So I go to the filter, select the job type, or I don't have to do that, I can just Frequency, so let's, I want to find all of my weekly jobs. So I'll go interval type first, add the filter, and I, I want to identify all of my weekly jobs. Okay, it's only three. Um, that's interval type, and now I need to know frequency, so I'm going to find all of my single jobs. Jobs that I'm doing once a week, and that's narrowed the list down. So from my 500 recurring jobs, I've now identified those that I'm, weekly lawn care, I didn't set the job filter, but weekly lawn care that I'm doing every week. Now, I want to change those, so I click the button on the right hand side to select them, and then I go down to the bottom right hand corner and say change frequency from one to and save it. And so what I've done there is identified all of my weekly lawn mowing jobs and in one movement adjust them all to two weeks. All right? Or just found all my two week jobs, move them to three weeks. So it's a way of adjusting the scheduler on mass for the recurring jobs. Like I say, if you're not using recurring jobs, all of that is a complete waste of time. If you are, it's a really powerful tool to adjust for seasonal changes. Okay, you can also access your job types here if you want to add additional job types from this page. 
You can view all of your completed jobs from this page as well. Um, the other value of this page is if you're looking to determine the value of future jobs, so I want to see what's the value of the jobs I'm, I'm going to do next month, then you just filter for that time period and look at the value of it's being created from there. Um, I think that's all that you need to see. Obviously, again, there's a video in the top right hand corner for if you want to watch it again or get more information. You can filter by everything. I just want to look at users for a particular uh, time frame, um, look at jobs that have a particular status, etc. All, all available there as filters across the top, in addition to the additional filter button. All right, so let's go back to the um, scheduler. And what I'm going to do is show you how to create a new job from the scheduler. Okay, so it's a bit of a boring layout. Hopefully yours is much fuller than this. There's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of other jobs sitting there to be done. But what I'm going to do is find a gap in the day for Blake, click on when I want the job to start, drag it, and release when I want the job to end. And that will then open up my job window. Okay, so this is to create the job visit. You can see that it's automatically assigned a job number. If I touch on the billing name and start entering customer details, it does an automatic lookup, or I can add a new contact from the first option. Okay, so that plus add new contact is sitting at the top. As I start typing in, my contacts appear, and then I can select the one that I'm looking for if it's an existing customer. Now, as soon as I do that, you can see that a right-hand panel appears with all of the information that I need to just check before assigning the job. Who they are, what are their billing terms, what's their address, um, how much has been invoiced, and what's currently outstanding. It's important to know before you're dispatching more jobs. The customer type, etc., is all available, and the latest note from the CRM is at the bottom. Okay, so we've created a job. We know who the billing person is. We've also got contacts. If it's an alternate contact, you've got a lookup of the other contacts within that business, or you can create a new contact for that business. Under the invoicing, somebody asked at the moment, do I need to have an invoice attached to a job? You don't. At the moment, you're creating this job with no invoice attached. Okay? You've got to select invoice attached. There's nothing attached. It's just creating the job with it. If I click on that drop down, you can see the choices now that I've got. I can add a quote to this job visit. I can add an invoice to it. I can just, just confirm that there's no invoice. Or if the invoice has already been raised for this job, I can assign the job to an invoice. Okay? And because the, the client is ABC Transport, it then presents the invoices that have been generated for ABC Transport. And so I can assign the job to that invoice. So that's relevant for businesses that are invoicing first, getting paid, and then going to do the job. Okay. If I'm going to do, a, let's go and attach a new invoice. So I'll click on new invoice. It brings up the invoice modal. The um, invoice date and due date will be pulling from your settings. You can see the billing details from the top left hand corner. And then locations are available so that I'm assigning a location to the invoice at this stage as well. All right? So every location that you've set up for this customer will be available in the location tab. And you can add a new location from this page as well to the option that I've highlighted now, new location. Tax types should all be preset. All of your line items are available to select as, as per normal. That will populate the invoice and attach it to the job ready for dispatch. You can view the PDF, make sure you save it when you finish the setting so that invoice is attached to the job. All right, so now I've created a job. I've um, uh, selected the location, attached an invoice to it, the job title I can put in if it's not set by default, the job number, enter is automatically generated, enter the purchase order number if there's one, add additional job notes if you want to for the, the technician in the field to see. I can assign it to whoever's highlighted. This is where I talked about earlier. If you do have different teams, you can um, determine what type of job can be set to what type of person. Set the duration and priority. 
the due date and the due time have already been set, as has the duration from where I dragged it in the scheduler. All right, so in the schedule, I highlighted when it's to start, on what day, who it's to be assigned to, and for how long. And then if I know the value of the job at the bottom, I can enter that in. With that job value, underneath, you can tick to display the value on the app, which means the app user will be able to see the value, or you can uncheck it so that they can't see it. All right? Depends on how you want to run that. All right, so that effectively can be sent right now as a finished job ready to go. The other tabs at the bot at the top enable you to add some more detail if you want to. So if you know now that this is going to be a recurring job, you can go and make it set up the recurring profile for it now. If there are forms to be attached to this type of job, then you can attach the forms now. So the, the, the job forms and the safety forms can all be selected from the page. Those job forms that you've selected are visible down the bottom. So I've selected here, let's say the um, typical job form would be a work order or a job sheet, and a typical safety form would be a pre-start record. Okay? And because I've selected those two forms, they're sitting underneath here. I can go into those forms before I've dispatched the job and fill in any information that I want to before it gets sent. Again, I'm going to a fair bit of detail here, and if you're not using forms, you can ignore this. If you are, then it's, it's, it's valuable, useful stuff. The final attachment is I, I can attach documents to the job for the person in the field using the app to have visibility of it as well. Okay? So in the job section, there'll be an attachment file. It might be a site plan or a floor plan or an agreement. Anything like that can be added as an attachment. You can add multiple attachments and they'll all be visible to the user in the job. Okay, I'll go back to job details. It's all done. This has been the, probably the slowest way that you can do it because I've done it manually and I've entered nearly every field. In practical circumstances, you would have job types set up and I'll show you how quick it can be if, if you've got the job types running as well. All right, hit dispatch. As soon as I do that, it's created sent to the mobile device, they get a ping on their phone that they've got a new job, their jobs in the jobs list will increase by one, and it's assigned within the scheduler. Okay, I'll just do a quick one so you can see a faster way of doing it if you're using um, top types. So, of course, you have to identify who the customer is. That populates all of that. It's a weekly lawn care or whatever it might be, and that populates everything else straight away. It even brings in the recurring profile, so you can make sure that you've got that right. The invoice is already attached because I've set up my line items as part of the job type, so I can go in and check that. That will bring in all the, the default details. The line item's already there. It's $100. I know this client's wealthy, so I'm going to pop the default from $100 to $200. Uh, everything else is set and done. Save that, and the invoice is attached to that job, ready to go. Right, so it literally is two to three clicks to create that job if you've got job types in place. The time and data are all defined by the scheduler when I opened it, it's job done, dispatched. So literally, under 10 seconds, you've created a job and dispatched it ready with the invoice attached, recurring profile built, job done. Okay, so that is scheduling and dispatching jobs in the app. You can use the scheduler, you can also go into jobs and hit new job. So you don't have to use the scheduler. Hitting new job takes you to effectively exactly the same page, just on a larger format. So there you can see all of the same information is being collected uh, in order to dispatch the job. Okay, so what we'll do now is jump across onto the app and basically look at the same thing from there. By the way, you can see on that notification there, there's, there's the new job assigned. It was assigned 14 minutes ago. That's when I received it. This is when we dispatched it. So there's the notification of the new job. Okay. So jobs up in the top of the app. I'll pull down to sync it. If you remember, just drag the drag it down and release. You can see that it's now checking tables. 
new jobs are being added. Done, go into the job, and here's my list of jobs. Uh, we touched on this earlier this morning, but just to give you an overview, the first page is all jobs. The second page is the view jobs for the day. The third tab shows jobs for the week. And the fourth option is what we call queue. And this is like a, a taxi rank. If you imagine uh, from the portal, you can dispatch the jobs to everybody or everybody in a particular group. And whoever accepts it first gets it. So it's just like a taxi ranking idea. Um, once one person accepts it, then uh, it'll disappear for everybody else. So first in best dress, basically. But it's called Q, and you can assign it to, when you're, when you're assigning the job, instead of assigning it to an individual or to a group, you assign it to the Q. Um, some of you will love that, uh, particularly if you've got emergency business and you've got subcontractors, so you want to assign it to a subcontractor. It's an emergency, you don't care who does it, but you want it done fast. Uh, others will, will never use it. All right, so here's my list of jobs. If I swipe from the left, I can communicate with the customer. If I swipe from the right, I can accept, reject, or reschedule the job. When I go into it, here's what it looks like, and this is just a demo one, so it doesn't have an invoice attached. If it did, the invoice detail would be in there as well. But let's just have a look. Okay, so here's my job details. This one hasn't got much in there, so it's fairly straightforward. I can have a look at the map and see where it is straight from here. That will show me a view of the map of the, of the job location. Hide that. You'll see underneath then, there's a range of different buttons. Now, I can create a new quote straight away. I can, sorry. I can um, create a new invoice straight away, or I can start my travel, right? So if you want to record travel times and everything else, I hit en route. This gives me route directions from where I am to where the job is. I can stop at any time and pause for a travel break. That will record my break times. Hit resume to go back to my travel. If I'm running late, I can hit the orange late button. I can then hit call or SMS. If I SMS, it brings up an automated message and all I need to do is advise of my new arrival time. I'm gonna be there at 3.30 and said, I'm sorry. Hit send and that will send the uh, text straight to the customer to let them know that you're running late. All right, when I do arrive, I hit the arrive button and now I can start my job. Now you can avoid all of that travel stuff if it's not relevant to you, don't worry about it, just ignore it. When you receive the job, you simply hit the blue start job button. All right, simple as that. If there's nothing to do, if you've just got to record the fact that you're there, you don't even need to do that. You just submit it and that closes the job is done. All right. So although I'm going through all of this, please remember that it can be extremely simple. The job's been assigned to you, you go into the job and look at the details, you hit submit, the job's done, finished, there's nothing else to do. If you are using forms, this just shows an example of how those forms can be used. So in this case, there's a safety first form, and then there's a work order, which is the job form. So in addition to the invoice, I've got something that's more complex to be done. It might be an inspection report, it might be a, a, an audit, because we've got that flexibility with the forms, it can be whatever you want. You can build your own forms and have them collect whatever information you want for that customer. So in this case, I want to go in and start the job form. I can't because it's been set up so that I must complete the safety first forms first. All right, so a message pops up saying, for your safety, please complete the safety first forms in order to access the job form. So I'll have to go in and finish my pre-start before I can get into the job form. Okay, again, that's the setting. You don't have to force it. You can enable them to get into the job form first and worry about the safety later. Um, a lot of clients love the fact that they know that whoever's in the field is completing the relevant safety forms before they get into the job, okay? Again, if you're not using forms, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's all irrelevant. You just go in, open the job, do it, hit submit, finish, move on to the next one. All of the job details are still available at any time. You just open up that section and that gives them pretty much everything you need to know when you're on site. If there's location notes, they'll be in there. If there's attachments, they'll be in there. And if there's invoice details, we'll, we'll grab one that has got an invoice so we can see that. Okay, so here's another job. You can see that it's got notes. But if there's notes attached, CRM notes, I can go into those and look at all of the history of the notes for that customer. They're all attached to the job. 
Here's the invoice detail, so I can see that as well. And don't forget that's the setting. You can close it off so it can even have the invoice attached, but the guy using the app doesn't see it, but, but have, have access to it. In this case, they can. And if I look at that and say, okay, this job has got to change, underneath the invoice details, you've got the ability to edit the invoice, to look at a PDF of the invoice, to email the invoice straight away, or to take payments on the invoice. So I'll just show you that. If I hit pay, it brings up the payment detail. It automatically defaults the amount to what's owed. Obviously, if they're only part paying, you just adjust that to what they're actually giving you. Um, it has the send payment email ticked by default, so it'll automatically send a uh, paid invoice receipt to the customer unless you uncheck it. And then down the bottom, it's got paid by, so you can indicate how you're being paid. If you click card, it opens up the credit card option, okay? Now, if you have an account with Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E dot com, then you can take payment through the app right now. It'll bring up the card detail, uh, take payment, and that automatically converts it to a paid invoice and sends the receipt. If you're not using Stripe, Stripe is a payment way that we use, mainly because they're extremely good to work with. They're global. Um, we are. We have just added another US gateway, and we'll be adding more. But Stripe's good. Um, we don't make anything out of Stripe, not a cent. So uh, any costs are, are their costs. If you go to Stripe.com and can see how much they charge. We don't care if you use Stripe or not. You can continue using your own bank um, point of sale or F or whatever you're using. Instead of hitting take payment, you take the money and just hit record payment. Okay. So it's noting that the invoice is being paid but you've used an alternate method to, to take that money and then hit add payment. All right, as soon as you've done that, the invoice is converted to paid if the whole amount's been paid. If it hasn't, it will remain as unpaid if there's an outstanding balance. And that's it, it's, uh, that's job done. Um, hit submit, job status changes to complete, schedule is updated to a new color, any triggered actions that have come off it like sending the, the paid invoice will automatically happen. Close the job and you're on to, on to the next one. Okay, so that's jobs. It might be good, um, Barry, to split this into jobs and invoices rather than covering them together. Yep. So we can answer any specific job related questions now and then invoice in a second. That's great. We've actually got some really good questions from uh, the webinar. Uh, the first question is Can you get more than 10 customers? up at any one time. I think that means do, can you display more than 10 customers at any, any, any one time? Uh, Jason, if that's not correct, please uh, shoot us another question and we'll answer it. So, uh, sorry, just repeat the, the start of that question. Can you get more than 10 customers up at any one time? And I think that question came through as you were displaying the timeline. Um, uh, Jason, we'll come back to you and clarify. Yeah, so I'm just trying to work out where that restriction is. Next question Can attachments be Word or Excel format? Oh, okay. Not good. Sorry. We might have an answer to that one, if that's what's being asked. Um, maybe there's only 10 here. So when you're viewing your contacts, number of contacts per page might be 10. Maybe that's it, I don't know. But on the right hand side, you can change that to 10, 20, 30, 50, or maximum 50 per page to view. I suspect that's what's being asked. Uh, so that was Jason. Jason, uh, if you can see the screen here, uh, we're in the portal of contacts. We're on the right hand side, there's a little drop down and it can show you how many uh, customers you can see at any one time. Up there in the right hand corner. If the question's any different, choose another question. Um, can attachments be Word or Excel formats? Um, we are adding more capability in terms of what the attachments are. Um, 
there's some stipulations over the drawing tool. So I'll just explain that. The drawing tool enables you to bring in um, site plans or floor plans or photos and be able to draw or drag icons onto those images. So they have to be of a certain file type in order to work within the drawing tool. Otherwise, the attachments are all, uh, when you upload an attachment, it'll tell you what you can and can't upload in terms of the different file formats. We are opening that up to allow pretty much everything. So if there are any restrictions on at the moment, they'll, they'll soon be released. Uh, next question, uh, can each of the weekly service jobs be added to one monthly invoice? Um, not, not automatically at the moment, no. Um, you would need to create the invoice separately to the jobs. If you're doing weekly jobs or they're alternate through the month or they're ad hoc through the month, if you don't want to invoice on a per job basis, but rather invoice on a monthly basis, then you need to, to separate the invoicing. So you can still dispatch the jobs and do them through the month, but the invoice would have to be done on a monthly basis separately. Our next question, can I set two or three schedules for the same job, i.e. to schedule a visit for a quote and then schedule a visit to do the job? Um, you can't at the moment. Each instance is in its own right. This is something that we touched on this morning. We are looking to get into more of a visit structure so that when you set up a, a job, you can set up multiple visits for that job, either scheduled or not. Um, but at, at the moment, no. You, you do the first visit and then you reschedule it for what the next stage will be. Okay. Uh, here's a good question. If you want to change the order of jobs on any given day, do you just drag the job to the different time slots? And will this update occurring tra transactions, including new times for each job on future dates? Yes, that's, that's literally all you do. You just drag it and move it, and that will update in the app uh, as well. If you are moving a recurring job in any way, uh, it will ask you if it's for that instance only or for all future occurrences. So there will be times where it's a recurring job. You're doing it every Monday. A particular Monday isn't right, so it could be moved to Tuesday. It will then ask you, do you want all future occurrences changed to the it seven days from then, or is it just that one instance that's being changed? Uh, here's a quick question from Dale. Uh, can you briefly run through the tabs on the management portal where to find scheduler and jobs? So just do what you did again there. Yes. So in the top menu, it's, it's the jobs option, and then the scheduler is within that drop down. So you can either create jobs through the scheduler, or you can create a new job from the same drop down. You can view all existing jobs in whatever status they're at. You can import jobs or you can view your recurring profile. That's all under the jobs menu in the top horizontal menu bar. Excellent. Um, Jason's got a comment here. When you submit a job, it takes you back to the home page. Um, not sure whether it's a, a problem or a, or a statement. Um, Jason, if you want to give us some more detail on that, we'll uh, take, uh, take further questions. Uh, any questions from the floor? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask regarding the schedule again. I have a monthly job schedule to put in, uh, which I can say, for example, the 8th of this month. Up for the next month, I want it to be that first Friday of every month, so to speak, within a month, my family case, the next month is different. How do I keep that? Is it committed enough to quite figure out that first Friday of each month or? So, setting a recurring job, this month it's on the 8th, for example, next month you want it to be on the first Friday, right. and going forward you want it to be on the first Friday. That's right. Uh, unfortunately with us, that's, that's a two-stage approach. So you set the job up first to do it in the first instance, and then set up the recurring profile, or you set up the recurring profile to be on the right date going forward, 
and adjust the first one just for the first the first visit. So you can figure out every one after being that date or that day. Yeah, so it's two ways to do it. Set up the recurring profile as you want it first yep. and adjust the first instance only. Yep. yep. Or do the first job whenever it is and then set up the recurring profile for when you want it to continue thereafter. So kind of two ways to achieve okay. the same thing. This selection for that, like let's say for the first Friday of the month before. Um, on the on there quarterly or let's say fully month, it doesn't give me the option of that work day or the day that I can pick. So you're after a selection that is the first day of yeah. or a particular selection that's different from what you understand currently. Yeah. Did you answer that? The, the idea is you can set the recurring first. The idea is you would set the recurring job up to be on that Friday. Now, if you say every, as long as what you use is multiple of seven days, so every 21 days or every three weeks, first job is on a Friday, every job multiple of seven will be on a Friday. And then you would just go back to the first job. So you can't set it, I don't believe, to be the first day of the month, whatever day that is. Because um, then we're going to have clashes with going to work on weekends. That's right, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Okay. okay, next question. Next question from the webinar. Uh, can you please remind me, can we attach OHS forms, copies of insurance? Police clearance, etc. When we see their quotes, some commercial and industry clients want to see this supporting documentation. So it's related to quotes. Can you attach copies? Um, so if you're if you're quoting from the portal, you will very soon be able to add attachments. It's in the 30th of November released, add attachments to a quotation. Um, if you're in the field and you're quoting there and then and they want to see copies of those or you want to email them from um, the app, then we have what's called a resources section. Now, resources is like an e-library. I'll just show you in the portal first. So I've gone to resources in the top menu and then hit view resources. Resources, it's an e-library. It's a document management. So you can upload... Um, whatever files you want, create folders, and this will mean more when you see it in the app, but um, here's an example where we've got different folders, safety procedures, catalogs, pricing structures, operations manuals, registration documents, company handbook, licenses. All of these types of documents can be uploaded here, and you put them into folders, and you can call the folders whatever you like. Um, uh, and when you upload that document, if it has an expiry date, so if you're using chemicals and things like material safety data sheets, which will have an expiry date, so when you upload the document, you put the expiry date in and the system will automatically notify you when that document is approaching its expiry. Great for vehicle regos and licenses and that sort of thing as well. Um, when you're looking at it in the app, you go to the resources section, that lists all of the resources. So the, the beauty of it is, is, again, if you've got multiple people, you upload it once in the portal, it syncs to everybody's devices, so everybody's got the latest copies of everything all the time. And when I go into the operations manual, if that needs to be emailed to a customer, you swipe from left to right, email, and you can send that attachment off. So it's often very good for, if you're on site and work, work safety there, or a site manager, safety manager wants to see something, you've got everything to hand, you can email it to them straight away, as well as showing them a PDF of it. Um, from from the app. So that's another way of sending this type of information as one-off type scenario um, to a customer there and then. The more effective way for, for any standard information that's always going to be sent is to add it as an attachment to the quote or invoice, which, as I said, will be available very soon. Hello, question, please. Um, yeah, with the residential office, the Matthew, Matthew, uh, the is 
uh, can you default to a day, week, or month of view of the schedule? Once once you've set your settings, it will it will come back to the page I think uh, uh, that you left it as, um, but it normally defaults to the week mode. Uh, did you save it? Just make sure in, in the in the setting um, when you've adjusted it. Just make sure that you hit the save option as well. Okay, so I'll just go through that. Um, job. What you're trying to do is set a default uh, view of the scheduler. Okay. Yep. So we're going down the bottom here into the date time setting. So for example. This, this it's not save, it's apply, sorry. So if I want to change my, um, I don't want to see Fridays either, then I just disable that and hit apply. And now my Friday has gone from the view. Okay, so there's a number of different settings you can adjust to get it to the stage and the look and feel that you want. And just make sure that you hit apply. Month view? Uh, up in the top. Is day, day, week, and month the three op blue, op blue option button? Uh, we'll take that offline and deal with anything else you're not yep. sure about. Uh, question here on, on the resources. Yes. Um, you can obviously have different people doing different things. Yes. Can you filter what the deal people can say? Yes. So I'll just show you the upload page. I've gone, I've gone to resources and then hit new resource, okay, which has opened up the new resource page. Here you can see I put in the name of the document, put a folder in, and all of my existing folders will be there or I can create a new folder, version, expiry, and description, and then underneath that, who can see it, all right, and you can set it to different user groups. By default, everybody will have main as a user group. That's there by default. So just tick that and, and that will be visibly just for that user group. Yep. The, other question, question. the other question was on the scheduler. Yep. Um, you can schedule a job, but if I'm scheduling my time, so I might be doing certain yeah, or whatever. Yep. Is there a function to be able to Yeah, I've, so is there a function to create admin jobs, marketing jobs, non-revenue generating jobs uh, in the schedule? The, the easiest way to do that is set up a range of all job types. Okay, so uh, and a classic is annual leave. If you want to block out days of annual leave, you just set up a job type called annual leave. You go in and, and create it for whatever that period is. Sick leave, marketing, have as many as you like and they will show up in the scheduler for what they are. Yep. Okay, uh, let's ask another question from the uh, webinar first. If we are using recurring invoices in zero only, how does Formatize handle the change to recurring weeks, i.e. change from four weekly to twice weekly? Um, they're, they're two different things, I suppose. They're, they're separate from each other. If you've set up recurring invoices in Xero, they're, they're going to trigger off no matter what, and that's nothing to do with formatize. That's just triggering from Xero uh, as, as set up. Um, that will be separate to the jobs. So what you need to do with the jobs in formatize when that seasonal adjustment time comes is, is as I demonstrated, go into jobs, into your recurring jobs, Identify all of your weekly lawn mowing jobs, for example, and adjust the frequency. So that will change it from being every two weeks to every three weeks or whatever the new schedule might be. And that's independent, completely independent of what Zero is doing in terms of triggering the recurring invoices. Question from the floor over there, please. Yeah, I was wondering if the map view or the hybrid view would be available one day. Hybrid view availability for one day. Uh, it will, yes, it will. 
there's, there's quite a lot going on with the schedule at the moment in terms of development, and that, that's one of them, yeah. With some smart stuff as well, we're, we're looking at route optimization within the day view as well. So you can see your jobs for the day in their order, it shows them in the chronological order, um, and you'll be able to adjust those to maximize travel times manually and automatically. So there's a, there's a ton of work going on in the schedule right now, yeah. Question from the webinar, how is job duration entered when using the app? Um, it's not at the moment. It's set by job type. Uh, if you're not using job type, then you just enter the manual start date. I don't think it's available as a field in the app, but that's probably a shortcoming. It probably should be. So. That, that will be added. That sounds like a feature request, yeah. adding the job duration into the app. Okay, uh, let's have a look at another one. Uh, attachments may also be JPEG or PDF, is a statement from Sandra. Okay. That's cool. Uh, can tasks and the scheduler interact? If so, how do they interact? Uh, they don't at the moment, but they absolutely will. Um, when we release tasks, in the app, they will be added to the new diary function. So there's a huge amount of work, as I said, going on with the scheduler. Um, that's to bring all of the scheduler functionality that you can see in the management portal into the app as well. The app diary is very basic at the moment. You can, I'll, I'll bring it up so you can see it. But um, it's kind of come from a background of, of where all the scheduling for most larger businesses is done in the scheduler. And then the, the app user just needs to see their diary for the day or month or whatever. So the way that it works is you just jump to whatever the, whatever the relevant day is, you can jump to that and then you'll, you'll see the jobs behind it for the day that you've selected. But uh, you don't have any scheduling ability in here at the moment. So the new version, uh, you will be able to see it in day, week and month mode. You'll be able to touch on it to create a new job for that space. You'll be able to see jobs for yourself and for other users and be able to assign jobs to other users um, all from the app. So that's coming out in the new version. In addition to that, any tasks that are related to you, which are normally internal tasks, will also be visible in the diary. So the two will become interlinked once the new diary feature is released. Uh, another question from the webinar. Can the scheduler app display all of today's jobs on a map so we can pick the next closest to our location. Yep, not yet, but that, that is also part of it. So when you're actually looking at your jobs for the day, there will be a, a map filter at the top, which will do exactly that, uh, and will enable you to rearrange the, 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 the routing that we talked about to maximize the, the uh, efficiency of the day. Uh, just to confirm, you can use formatize to take payments. Any cost for this? Uh, so, yes, as we touched on earlier, when you're in the invoicing section, you've got an option to take payment. The gateway that we promote is Stripe. We will be adding other payment gateways. We already have added some in the US, etc. cetera. Um, we don't charge for it, Stripe charge for it, and the rates are as per the Stripe.com, S-T-R-I-P-E.com. Um, I know that they don't charge a monthly fee, so there's no $25 or $30 a month, it's a transactional fee. Um, and the rates are published on the site. So You've got to set that up. You set the account up with Stripe, and then come in and, and either we'll help you do it, or you can you can uh, trigger it, very similar to the zero trigger. And once you've got the account set up, there's the two uh, in sync. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that was uh, Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E, and set up um, by separately, and then uh, either integrate or uh, formatize uh, can help you. Um, next question from the webinar. Uh, is there a way to enter custom regular intervals? Uh, for example, three or six weeks. Customer, uh, customer regular intervals, three or six weeks. I think we possibly covered that. Uh, yes, so it, it's a little bit perhaps confusing in terms of setting up the recurring profile, the flexibility of that. 
I just bring it up on the screen. When I hit recurring job, it's got one and month. Both both of those are editable. So if I want to make it three week, I think was the example, I change it to three and to week, and now the schedule is will, will be on a three weekly basis. If it's six weekly, then I just change three to a six, and now the job's going to be set up every six weeks. And again, if you just have a look at the bottom, it gives a summary of that recurring profile. It's going to create a job every six weeks, starting from the 10th of November. Da, da, da. Okay, so the drop downs aren't necessarily helpful, but once you know that you've got complete flexibility around those numbers, you can set up whatever schedule you want. Any questions from the floor? Yes, sir. Any questions? So a regular staff has already got a session from say another program. Would this particular or a new person be possibly to make them start using the program so they're flipping back and forth the later than that and just pick on the start and new jobs instead of regular and be the simple way to get forward? Yeah, I think I think that would be a really good idea. So 
where you've got a customer with an old address and a new address, and you've only got the, the old address, and you haven't, haven't got the uh, new address yet. Yeah. Yep. It's only coming up with the old address. Okay. And you, you've entered the new address somewhere? Uh, on the Jimbo app. Yeah. Oh, on the Jimbo app. Okay. Um, Should it transfer all that information over? Have you already done the import from Jimbo to us? Probably not. Import the real client data. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's got pretty much 95%. Okay. My All entire client right. was just hasn't got a secondary address for a client to do. I see what you mean. So it's only okay. the third address. Okay. So should I not be using this app till? Um, that sounds like an import check to me. So we'll, just, yeah. we'll, we'll recheck whatever information came from Jim yeah. and to make sure that it's picking up all the locations. So should we not start using that till? I think they can be fixed well straightforward. I check the import yeah. process. Yeah. Uh, we'll take that one offline and we'll get Phil to look after you. Any more questions from the floor? Going once. Uh, what progress has been made with displaying the combined expected job sales for the day or week on the scheduler? Um, so that that will come out properly. So so people uh, we haven't had it before, but a lot of the gyms guys want to see the value of jobs that they're doing um, tomorrow or next week or or next month. So we have added the value field into the job. Um, the next fix that will actually pull in the invoice total. So if an invoice has been attached to a job, it will automatically populate that value field. I'll show you what I'm talking about for those that aren't sure. Um, it'll automatically populate the value field with the invoice amount, but you can override that if the two aren't the same. So down the bottom here in the job details page, you can see a job value field, almost almost the very top page. You can tick or untick whether you want the app user to see that value or not. Once it's entered, it's attached to the job. So then when you go into the jobs view, you can filter the jobs in order to see the associated value. So here I've just got all jobs at the moment. If I go to the bottom in the total, I can see the total value of the jobs that I'm looking at. So you can then filter the jobs to only be looking at the ones that you're interested in and the value will update at the bottom. So if I only want to look at jobs for a certain period, I'll put in the date period at the top, that will adjust the table and the value total will add. So it is effectively there. It's not as clean as a lot of people would like, but they want to see it essentially just in the, in the scheduler mode or in the, in the app mode. We will be doing it, but there's a big first step with, with a couple of clicks, you can see exactly what you want, assigning the, the value to the period and the jobs. Well, I think we'll take one more um, question from the webinar. Is there a function to automatically calculate break even on a job? It would be useful to be able to include a labour cost calculation. It would be even better if it was possible to calculate daily or weekly break even to provide a casual staffing budget. Hmm. Um, so we have started working more on the financial side of the solution for small businesses. Um, I'll just show you this tab now, which is about to be released, which is the income and expenditure statement. So you will be able to go in, oh, sorry, um, select the period, and it will generate uh, an income and expenditure report showing the amount, net, tax, and total. Um, you will soon be able to assign expenses jobs, and that will effectively give you what you're looking for. There's some slight adjustments. You've already got the invoice assigned to the job, so it's just attaching time and materials. Um, so when you go in to make purchases through the app or the portal, you'll be able to assign those purchases to a job. And obviously, once you've got the income and expenditure, we're, we're there on job profitability. So it's not there yet, but as you can see, it, it's coming. And um, we, don't get me wrong, it's not intended to be a full accounting system here, and, and we can 
very easy to get taken off on doing a lot of stuff that no one ever looks at, but um, job profitability is one that we are focused on as well. Excellent. Uh, folks, we are slightly over time for this one. Uh, keep the questions coming um, through the webinar and we'll try to get to them uh, offline. Uh, but what I'd like to do now is get uh, Max to talk us through invoicing. Okay, so um, we'll go back into the CRM and the management portal. And I'll go to the accounts tab at the top. And the first tab that we come into is invoicing. So there are a number of ways of generating invoices. The invoices can be generated in the accounting software, such as Xero, and former guys will pull them in when they're done. From this page, you can import um, sorry, you can create a new invoice in Xero for the customer that you're looking at, and you can also create a new invoice straight from the management portal here. So you just click on the green new invoice button, very similar to what you've seen already in terms of the layout and the modal. You select the customer. Once you've selected the customer, you can add a location to the customer or we'll select one of theirs. All of the line items are available. Hit save and the invoice is generated. You can then view a PDF and email it. So that's creating just an invoice straight off the cuff from the management portal. Equally, you can go into a customer. So if you're in the customer page, search for the customer that you're looking for. Go into the customer. And straight from here, the invoicing section. See all the current invoices and their statuses. Here you can create a new customer invoice Informatize, which will sync back to zero, or you can create a new customer in zero straight from this page. And that will take you into the client account, set up the invoice, pull in the customer's contact details, ready for you just to add the line items in zero. So it saves a lot of time moving between the different systems. Um, so that's on the management portal side, a couple of different ways to create invoices. Within the app, uh, again, very similarly the same way. You can either do it automatically through the job process, so you can attach the invoice automatically as a job site, or when you're creating a job, the invoice can be attached to the job. Alternatively, you can go into the accounts module, which is exactly the same as, as the portal, really. Hit on invoices. It will show you all of your current invoices in their different statuses, so unpaid, overdue, and paid. Again, a nice feature. If you've got nothing to do while you're having a sandwich, jump into your overdue invoices page swipe from the left and give them a chase, swipe from the right and take payment when you get the payment. Um, to add a new invoice, click the plus button at the bottom of the page and the new invoice can be set up from there. Alternatively, just like the CRM and the portal, you can go into the contact, again, swiping functionality, if you want to swipe from here, you can call their SMS or email, swipe from the right and you can hit the orange new invoice button straight from there. Or you can go into the customer itself and then split the financial tab at the top and then invoices and then hit the blue create new invoice button at the bottom. So it's three or four ways to create an invoice, ideally to save the time so you're not having to jump all over the app to get there because you can do it in a number of different places. The other shortcut at the top, there's those three buttons. So when, it, when you're in a contact, sorry, when you're in a contact, there's that little mini menu in the top right hand corner. Just click on that and from there you can edit their details, new contact, new note, new job, new invoice, new quote, new lead, straight from the top menu. Okay, so that is creating an invoice. Um, your invoice settings are all determined from the CRM settings that we talked about this morning. To, to adjust those, you go to settings for those of you that have just joined us at home settings in the top menu, and then CRM settings. That will open up all of your customer related settings. And the first tab is invoices. So go through there and adjust those settings to be exactly what you need uh, in terms of all of the, the various invoice settings. Um, not a lot more to say about invoices unless people have got specific questions. Um, obviously, within the CRM itself, you've also got the reporting tool. So when you go to CRM, you go to the end button, which is called reports. 
if there's anybody that's using uh, MYOB um, uh, account right, you do have the ability in here to go to invoices. So you've generated all of your invoices in Formatize. You can select the invoices that you haven't imported yet or filter them to get the invoices that you want. And once you've identified the invoices, you can go across to the right hand side drop down. It defaults to CSV format, but you can select MYB account right from there. And that will do a CSV export ready for import into MYB account right. We will be adding other options there for other non online based accounting software just to help with that um, process. So obviously there's a step involved. You've got to export the CSV and then import it into the other one. Uh, as opposed to the zero one, which is all sort of seamless, but at least that can be done in just a couple of clicks. So that's reports within the CRM, and then with selected invoices. All of your invoice detail there is you can filter it by pretty much everything, um, by a payment status at the top, but also by all of the other related fields to an invoice. So you can set up a report, um, expected pay date, invoice date, date created, modified, payment method, you might want to just look at all of the invoices that have been paid by cash, for example, so you can filter those um, by totals, by ranges, etc. So all of those are available as filters to filter the data and get the report that you want. And once you've got the data right, hit the download CSV button on the right hand side and that will give you a report on pretty much anything that you can ask for. Okay, thanks Matt. Uh, we'll take some questions now please. Question from the floor. How do you delete an invoice? Accounts. That shows you all of your invoices. Okay, so we're in the invoices tab of accounts now. That lists all of them. On the it's a little bit obscure now that you've mentioned it. It's true. But you can see all of your invoices there. Okay. On the far right hand side, there's a little checkbox. Check that. And then down the bottom of the page, there's an action. So you can see it's default to select action. Just select from there, delete, and then hit go, and that will get rid of it. That, that is in pretty much every data page, by the way. So if you're looking to delete things or get rid of them, it's normally done through that same format. There'll be a checkbox at the end and a delete function at the bottom of the page, plus other options if they exist. Okay, other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I have some insurance customers. So insurance claim customers, where do you put the claim number and the provider? Yes, so the 30th of November uh, version will enable you to add one-off comments to invoices, as well as signatures and photos and potentially the drawing tool to quotes especially. So that's designed for that sort of one-off data that's related to that invoice. Um, the way guys get around it now is just to, to enter it into a blank line item, but not ideal. The new, the new feature will have that scheduled at the end of this month. Uh, we've got a question from the webinar here from Pizza. Not every job I invoice in Formatize is going across to zero. Uh, what am I doing wrong that's causing uh, concerns managing debtors? I think we might need to... Sorry, take... just one other, I'll just answer the other question. The other, the other option you've got is there is a reference field in the invoice. So in this mode I've just opened up now, there's a reference field here that you can enter that type of information. It's not, it's not ideal, but it is there available as well. That will appear on the invoice as well. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, so I, I can't answer that specific. Peter is going across to zero. Yes. Uh, I think we need to talk to you separately, Peter. So um, why don't you shoot uh, your uh, mobile franchisee code through the webinar, and we'll pick that up after. Um, I had a similar issue with zero and yep. qualified. The zero is going to zero for and the new policy is. Or the 
assigning invoice or payment, assigning invoice number, it's getting confused. And once it's overriding the other, um, so I actually went into full size and changed the invoice heading to assign to the other side again. And then the number is considered on differentiate between full size and zero. So Helen from Building Inspections is just sharing her experience. Uh, she had some uh, invoices being overridden because the zero uh, invoice number was the same as formatize. So in formatize in the settings, uh, she changed her uh, invoice prefix to invoice F for formatize, and that solved the problem. Uh, other questions from the floor, please. Any questions? Yep. Yep. Myself. In the report, is there a way you can get the conversion rate like the month or the week? Can you look at the conversion rate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So point to yeah. point to inputs. Yep. Um no. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. Um but but we're we're recording it all, so it will be available. Yeah. Um there's so many different reports essentially that, that can be generated. Um, everybody's interested in different things, but we're trying to make it so it's flexible so you can customize the report to extract what you want. But we don't have one on inversion rates yet. But clearly it's something that we want. Um, there's a question here from Sandra about opportunity to add customized fields. Matt mentioned earlier that in November uh, there will be uh, the opportunity to add a signature and comments as well as attachments to invoices and quotes, I believe. So is it custom fields for quotes or just custom fields in general? Uh, it says, will there be an opportunity to add customised fields? So Sandra, if you want to send through some more detail, uh, please feel free. Uh, next question, when taking payment on site, can you get a signature from the customer which is added to the invoice within the app? That will be in the 30 November release. Adding signatures and photos to invoices, great tool. We'll be ready 30th of November. That is to invoices and quotes. Invoices and quotes. Yep, and payments. Uh, as in making okay. payments. So you can take a photo of a, a credit card, a deposit machine. Yep, a receipt. Yep. Okay. Uh, so let's handle the accounting packages afterwards. We're getting a few questions about my of. Uh, my other account right coming through. I will talk to that in the next session. Uh, next question, when you delete an invoice, it also deletes the quote. Is there a way to stop it? Um, don't believe it's the case. It shouldn't be, but we'll, we'll confirm that for whoever said that issue. Thank you. Contact the support. Uh, so, Damien, please contact supportedformatize.com for that one. Um, Matt's saying that he doesn't believe that's the case. Uh, and also, uh, Peter, uh, for your zero issues, let's do the same, please. Um, uh, I've got a good one here. Uh, so, um, if you've scheduled all your jobs, this is probably a a scheduling issue rather than an invoice issue, but you've scheduled 15 to 20 jobs per day and then you have an unexpected day off, you need to move all the jobs forward by one day and reschedule. Um, what's, the, what's the process there? Sorry, back to scheduling for that one. The easiest way to do it right now, until the schedule is available in the app, is to just go into the, into the scheduler in the management portal and drag them across is it the next day or to when, when you're going to reschedule them. It's just drag and drop and then it's done. A um, bit more difficult to do in the app. You can do it in the app, but it's, it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, but that will be available also in the app with the new diary scheduler. Our next question is uh, from Sandra. Can we search in multiple ways? For example, insurance type customers by client reference number, address, name of client or insurer or specific client name? Uh, yes, you can. So if you go to the reports tab, it's probably the best place to do it. So in the CRM and then reports, contacts is the first tab that opens by default. And if you have a look in the filter option, 
all of those statuses and filters and information are available, including the custom fields that you've added yourself. So if you can see on the screen in this example, there's a number of different custom fields that have been added, bank details, Skype address, tax number, website, etc. All of these are available to filter, and you can filter as many times as you like in order to refine the data. So if I want to look at my sources, add that as a filter, that presents the different sources, zero is one of them, and then I want to add another filter then um, for uh, customer type or one of the other filters that are available here, those that have a tax file number for example. So you can literally just keep adding filters and that will reduce the list down to exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Um, we have a comment here from Matthew. It may be related to uh, the invoice presentation that Helen just explained, um, but recurring job prices show a zero in recurring jobs uh, for Matthew. That um, sounds like the setting position. I would check to using job types. Just make sure that you've got a value. If added the line items to a job type, just make sure that you've got the a value in those. Some, some people set the job type up with an invoice automatically this time, but don't put a value on it. And they, they do that because each job might be different. So you've just got to remember that if you are attaching an invoice to a job type, that will auto, automatically create the invoice with a zero balance if you haven't put one in. I suspect that's what's happening, but if, if it's not, then let us know. So check value against job type. Okay, any more questions from the floor, Helen? Um, yeah, with all the other changes that are coming into the update and the standard circuit, will we get an email or something that one more of those changes? Right, so the question is, for upcoming releases, will everybody be advised of those releases? Yes, yeah, so we'll... We'll get out of the notification. We'll also add it into the update section in the top right-hand corner under and we'll also tell Jim, so whatever um, I think we'll get in, will be there as well. Any more questions from the floor? Any more questions from the I think uh, I've got one for schedule, so we'll just use the time. Uh, can you print the day schedule? Uh, we haven't seen that yet. Everybody wants to print, don't they? <laughs> you can do a screen print, that's true. Um, when you are in list mode, so if you look at jobs, oh, don't get me wrong, I do understand why it needs to be printed. Um, you, can, you can filter that to get to the stage in screen print, but as we touched on earlier, we are going to add the um, run sheet function which will be customizable. So you'll be able to customize the fields that you want to get into the, uh, the run sheet style that you want and then you'll be able to print that. So I, I think that will solve whatever job print requirements are needed. Okay, so that's print run sheet. Um, I've got a, uh, a question come through by SMS. Uh, can a job be scheduled for a certain day per month? i.e. a job is in the, on the second Tuesday of each month, which every three months becomes five weekly. Now we had a similar question to that earlier. <laughs> so I think it was, uh, uh, you have to uh, skip it to us, I remember the other part. Can a job be skipping for a certain day, i.e. Uh, the second Tuesday of each month, which every three months then becomes uh, five. Um, so you can't set that up in, in one go. You would need to set it up um, either as two separate schedules for the first instance and then the second, or you set it up once for your first structure and then adjust it at the right time for the ongoing nature. Unfortunately, you can't sort of do both at once in the, in the, one, the one setup. Do 
sure. Yeah. So the light is in this function. Okay, so going back to the app, it's in the job section. So the job has been dispatched to whoever's got the app and they're, they're off doing the job. Um, when they go into the job, it brings up a range of options. One of them is en route. Select the en route, that means they're on their way. And it gives them route guidance from where they are to where the location is. You can hit the, the blue direct get directions bit hard to see on that screen, but um, down here, just direction is blue, and that actually gives them step-by-step route, -step route guidance from where they are to the job location. Um, this one's struggling because the, I'm in foothills and the job's in New Jersey in the United States, so <laughs> struggling a little bit with directions. But anyway, that, that's how it works. Um, the feature that you ask for is to hit the orange light button at the bottom, and that brings up a call or SMS. If I hit SMS then, that SMS message comes up, and the only thing that they need to enter is the arrival time at the end. So you just touch on next to the now and um, enter the expected arrival time. Okay. Okay. Do you have a question from the floor? So the question is about cost and how it works with the iPad. So you, you, you pay eight cents for that that text, yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. We we we're not trying to we don't make any money out of that eight so we do. We make about half a cent out of that eight cents. But um but it's far from being a money making exercise, it costs us money to, to have it as a facility. But it enables us to be able to pull in the templates and, and email function, uh, text functionality. Um, we're, we're looking at ways to avoid it so that you can use your own SMS credits that come with your mobile plan. We, we haven't got it. We can do it with voice now, so you're not using us with your voice. It's going through your, your mobile plan. Um, and we're, we're working on that, but we haven't come up with a, a really good, smart, reliable way to import the notifications and the messages and the reminders and everything else that we are generating and populated into your SMS channel with reliability. So it's still coming through us and it will cost. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's us sending it. It looks like it's you, but it's actually coming through the system. Yeah. Uh, I've got uh, one more comment uh, from Peter. Repairing jobs are not always showing in the scheduler. Um, not sure why that would be. Uh, Peter, we may need to take that one offline. Uh, one more question from the floor. I feel like it ties in with my question. Yep. I was asked earlier, when you're setting up a recurring job, there's a field where you can enter uh, um, how many days before that job turn up in your schedule. Um, so I'd assume that you would need to set that 30 or 60 days ahead of time. Um, but the question that ties into that is, you send the job to the current days and then you reschedule it, so that you schedule all the jobs that are re okay. So the creation date, um, and that's a classic example, you've got a job that you're doing every two weeks for the next two years. If, if they all appeared in the app instantly, you'd be, be jammed with all of these future jobs. So that, that field at the bottom is how many days before the job is actually due, do you want it to be created and assigned and into the app? It will sit in the, in the scheduler as a placeholder, so you can see that actually there is a job scheduled for that. But I think what's going to suit most gyms users is to change that three days to 30 days or, or even 60 days, so that when you're looking at it in the app as a user, you're seeing everything for the next month or two months. And I think that, that was your point. I think we've had some feedback around the same point. And I think that's probably the way to do it. So when you're creating a new job, the bottom field is how many days before the due date do you want this to be created and appear? 
change that from 3 to 30 or 60 and it'll give you exactly what you're looking for. Okay folks, uh, that concludes the um, afternoon's first session. Uh, any other questions we'll handle offline. Uh, for the webinar, please keep sending through questions. Uh, we are happy to answer them as and when time allows. Um, for the webinar people, you use the same link. So uh, just uh, stay online. We'll be back here at 3.30. So we'll start promptly at 3.30. Thank you. So your question was... Uh, yeah, I noticed that... Um, in the scheduler, on the app, you don't see all users assigned uh, jobs. Yeah. You only see your own, not, not all the stuff. Yeah. That's right. So the new, the new version, you'll be able to see everybody if you've got the permission to, and you'll be able to assign jobs to different people from the app as well. So basically, what you can do in the portal, you'll be able to do in the app as well. Uh, so at the moment you can't. At the moment you can only see your own. The, the new version has full functionality. Uh, December 31, that's two. So I don't actually have access to the app okay. at the moment. Is it, is it possible to look at the relationships you see through your files on your own? Is it possible to show money in the job? Uh, yes. So when you, when you create the job, you put the value on it, it or it has the invoice attached to the uh, well, what we do, we do a lot of brick work more. Yes. So we, when we write invoice, we don't put the money out in the previous job. Oh, what's owing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it will be in the run sheet that I talked about today. Okay. But it's not. That's not available. Okay. Yeah. So it's coming out on the 30th. Uh, run sheet. That's a weird yeah. one, right? And you'll find most of the gym guys as well. If we don't put down what's on it, the people who pay every schedule, then we're just right. So you can collect that day's end. And a lot of them don't have to keep any hours. Right. 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 I know, I know we've been asked for it many times, but that will be Yeah, yeah, it's very good. It gets the price down.
to. Yeah. Oh no no no. Like I said, we're not. We lose money on them. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much, man. You're welcome. Okay. 
Uh, I think that's it for the questions from the preceding uh, session. Uh, what we'd like to do now is um, introduce to you the accounting packages and then the upcoming releases. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of more information to talk about from the accounting packages point of view. Um, as, as you've probably seen from the demonstration so far, we, we have built uh, a lot of functionality with, with Xero. Um, Xero is one of many accounting packages. It's a very good one in terms of it being very cloud-based and um, uh, very API friendly. They talk to other software packages very well. Uh, it's growing very quickly and, and we've got a good partnership with them. However, they are just one of, of, of a number of accounting packages. So the other ones that we are intending to work with and have a very similar relationship with are, are MyOb Essentials and with QuickBooks Online. Um, and work, work is certainly well and truly underway on both of those. Um, the other popular one probably is, is uh, MyOb Account Right. As we showed earlier, you can go into the reporting section of the invoices and export to uh, the MyOb Account Right format, which will enable import into um, MyOb Account Right. But the, the challenge with uh, MyOb is they have, I think there's 13 different versions of MyOb from, from very small essentials through to their EXO. Um, it's very difficult to uh, manage a direct API with all of those. And then within that, um, users that are using different MyOb functions will upgrade and update to a certain level and they won't bother updating because it's doing everything they need. And so as versions change, the challenge with a, a, an API working really perfectly is always an ongoing one. So in the short term, we have a full API with zero, as you've seen. It works beautifully. Invoicing, um, purchases, accounts, line items, tax codes. When you go into the CRM and looking at a customer, you can see their current um, invoicing and balance details. You can click through and see visibility through both systems. So it's a very nice two-way integration. And, and the plan is to have as, as close to that as possible with MyOb um, and, and uh, QuickBooks Online. So we will keep you updated as those uh, developments happen. Uh, as I've said already, the, the first one is scheduled for um, the end of, end of December. And the other QuickBooks Online will, will certainly be in the first quarter of next year at the latest. So it, it's already in full development. So we'll, we'll get it done as soon as we can. Um, there are other ways around it. I won't go into it using forms today, but if you, if you absolutely have to, you can create a form with us that is an invoice that will automatically push into MyOp Essentials or into QuickBooks Online. So if you're genuinely stuck and you're looking for a solution into QuickBooks Online or MyOp Essentials, then let us know and we'll, we'll show you how that can be done. All right. Um, in terms of looking at the integration and, and how it works with Xero, I won't spend too much time on it uh, because we have covered a lot of it off, but I'll just show you the very basics. When you go into settings to trigger the integration, and, and some people will have tuned in just for this session, so I, I don't want to be too light on it, but um, go into settings, into CRM settings. The first default tab is invoices, and the first section is to select the accounting software. So you hit that drop down. You'll see that Zero is there, that QuickBooks and MYOB is coming soon. Select the Zero drop down, and that will trigger the audit automation. That's all you need to do. And in the background then, we'll do four sweeps of Zero. We'll pull in all of the historic line items, all the historic invoices, all of the tax codes, customers, suppliers, uh, and they will all update into formatize with that profile link going backwards and forwards and the ongoing sharing of information. So it's a really, really good integration. Um, in terms of the visibility within the system, once you've done that, um, as I showed earlier, when you go into a contact, you will be able to, first of all, in the top left-hand corner, it shows what's been invoiced through Zero and what's currently outstanding for that customer. If you click on the blue Zero logo, that will take you into your client's account in Zero. So it's just a direct click through. And in the same way, down in the uh, 
invoices and purchases section, uh, all of this is backwards and forwards to zero very nicely. So it's pulling in all the statuses of those invoices. You can create a customer invoice with us. Once it's saved, it will push to zero, or you can push the create customer in zero button, and that will take you straight into this client's page, invoice open, pre-populated with the customer details, and you just need to enter the line items, save it in zero, and that will update back into former client. So it's a very, very nice, simple, two-way integration that, that in zero zone words works beautifully. Um, and the same thing with, with purchases and suppliers. So, um, that, that probably covers enough of what people really want to see at this point in terms of how the two work together. So to create the profile in the first place, into settings, CRM settings, invoice, first option is uh, select the accounting software uh, and then all of that information. Give it about 15 minutes, as I said earlier today. It takes about 15 minutes for all of the information from zero to populate into Formatize. You get a little warning message up the top here to notify you that it's in progress, and then another one when it's finished and ready, ready to go. But as soon as you've started it, if you then click on your contact button, you'll see already that, that the pages will be full of your customer information coming through. Um, the same functionality is available in the app. So if we just jump across to the app and hit on the settings page, and then go to accounting software, uh, there it is, exactly the same feature. So you, you grab your accounting software from here and that will trigger the integration. And the same way, the invoice settings and everything else is also available uh, to customize the details of those invoices from the settings page in the app. Um, I think that's probably enough. Um, so we have a question from uh, the webinar. Uh, not necessarily related to zero, but a uh, really good question. Uh, we haven't seen how to recall a purchase, such as fuel or new tools. Good question. Okay. So, almost exactly the same process. You go into accounts, into expenses. <laughs> this will list all of the expenses in the business so far, including those that are unpaid or overdue to be paid or paid. To add a new expense, you just hit the plus button in the bottom right hand corner and that brings in the details. So who have you bought it from, purchase, again you don't need to enter all of this information, it's only the fields that you, you care about uh, and all of your purchase line items, your suppliers will be available in here to select from or you add new. So it, it's as simple as that. I'll just go back so you can see that again. There's the detail. So I went into expenses. It shows me all of my current expenses with the different statuses across the top. So we're in full at the moment, unpaid, overdue, and paid. And then from there, or from any of those pages, you can just hit the blue plus button in the bottom right hand corner to add a new expense. The new which coming out in, in uh, 30th of November enables a photo of uh, the receipt or the docket or the uh, item to be added in automatically into that um, expense claim as well. So you've got that covered off from a compliance point of view. Okay, any questions from Marcel? Just today, it's been lengthy on the Google Analytics for the Google What it will do is assign it to a job as well. So you'll have the invoice related to the job and any expenditure items assigned to the job as well. So we're getting back to that sort of developing a job profitability stage as well. Yep. So the question to Marcel was can you apply that expense to an invoice, to the customer invoice? And the answer was you apply it to the job. That's right. So the job will have the invoice attached to it and the expense attached to it, which can over time be, be time and money. Uh, I think we might have answered this earlier, um, but I think I may have skipped a question when it came in through, through the webinar. Uh, can we change the format or the look and feel of the invoice or any of the other forms? Um, we have covered it already, but I'll, I'll just reiterate again. The, if you're using the invoicing function within the CRM, 
because it has to link with Xero and the other accounting software, we're a bit restricted in terms of adjusting the look and feel and the content. So we, we take a fairly standard invoice style. Obviously, it will bring in your logos for your division, your colors. Um, so if it's a mowing invoice, it'll have the mowing green logo and, and terms and conditions. Um, if you are wanting a completely different looking invoice, then we can move into the forms mode and create an invoice using forms. And with that, we've got 100% flexibility. How it looks, what's collected, what other information is included. But within the CRM, when you're moving from quote to invoice to job, working with other accounting software packages, we're pretty restricted in terms of how that can look. Um, this is not related to zero, but uh, another question. Uh, how can I change my work day from, for example, nine to five to seven to seven? Where do I do that? Um, when you go into the scheduler, so jobs in the main menu, and then scheduler. <laughs> Down in the bottom left hand corner is a time and date settings. And this is where you adjust your working day. So the third field down has two markers and you can just extend the start time and the finish time to, to, to work with your, um, your business out. Make sure you hit apply when you're finished. Um, I think you may have answered this one, Matt, but my Ob Essentials is coming soon. Uh, account right, what's the deadline for account right? We don't have a defined date yet, I'm afraid, for account right. Um, if you if you missed it, you are able to generate a CSV report from Formatize Invoices Reporting tab. So very quickly go to CRM into into reports, far right hand end, select invoices. Once you're in the invoices, this will bring in all of the invoices that you've created within Formatize. And then on the right hand side, you've got the ability, once you've filtered it to the month or the week or whatever you're uploading, you can select my of account right from the drop down. We will be adding more functionality to this, but that is a way of exporting your invoices from Formatize to import into account right. I know that's only one small part of the overall integration, but that, that's already available. We will be doing more with account right. It is a commonly used accounting package, but uh, I don't have a, a date or any further releases on that. Uh, my other census is our, our first, first priority. Um, question regarding uh, expenses and zero. With expenses and zero, if you add the fuel purchase via the app, uh, did you let us know about how that then syncs with zero on my computer? So um, if you uh, upload an expense uh, on the app, how does it sync with the uh, desktop? and zero on the desktop. So what if the purchases syncs with the purchases side of zero? So um, supply, it's, it's basically a supplier invoice. Um, it's not a, a travel expense as such. You're recording a, a, a supplier invoice as a purchase, and that will update in zero exactly the same way as the invoices do. Okay. Um, Zero has bank fees, including expenses, which you don't need to enter. Will these be synced back to formatize? Zero has bank fees, including expenses, which you don't need to enter. Will these be synced back to formatize? Uh, yes. So, um, in the same way, an invoice when it's paid is reconciled in zero. So the zero does the bank feed, it matches up invoices and expenses with um, purchases and invoices from formatized that have been pushed to zero and, and you reconcile them in exactly the same way. It does the bank feed match to the account item, classes it as paid. Any questions for the floor? No questions or we'll take one more from the webinar. Uh, will we get a prompt when we sign into the management portal that there is an update to run? This would then prompt us to look into help update or the help tab and then drop down update to read about what's changed or what is new. So will we get a prompt? Yes, you will. 
we, we haven't been very good at that, but there, there will be a prompt. We'll also now start using Jim's uh, communications more as well. So um, any update we do that relates to Jim's, we will notify Jim so that, that can be pushed through the Jim's communication channels too. Any questions from the floor? No more questions? Any more questions from the webinar? No? Going once? Going twice? This one might be an early mark. Sold. Uh, we'll move to uh, next releases. Uh, if you can pull up the PowerPoint, please, Matt, and share with the folks at home. Okay, so we we're waiting for the slides to update on the slides at home. Okay, I'll bring the app up anyway and talk about it from there. All right, so here we're going to talk about um, feature releases, what, what's coming. And as we talked about earlier, in the top right-hand corner is the, is the feature request section. We have something like 250 items at any point in time, stuff that we're working on, making it better, making it work a bit smoother, saving time, making it more efficient. Um, Sorry, guys, make sure that people at home can see the right thing. Just talk amongst yourselves. about it while we're waiting for screens to update, but um, we take feedback from you guys really seriously. Um, we've got lots of things that we think will make it better, but what we think doesn't really make any difference. It's what you guys think. When you're out in the field using it all day, every day, how can we make it better? How can we make it faster? And there's a real attitude of keep it as simple as possible. Have the features there that you need to use, okay, so that you know they're there, but trim it down and just use what you need to use. And then how can we make that faster? Because if you can shave off even five minutes from every job every day, over a week and over a month and over a year, it makes an enormous difference. And that's money that you can be spent making money rather than doing what was basically admin uh, in terms of the system. So please, please believe me when I say that we're, we're so open to making it better, it's not funny. Um, a lot of traditional software companies will sort of sign it off as a finished product maybe do a release every couple of years for, for some improvement. Um, we're almost the opposite. So please use that feature. Uh, email us in if you've got any ideas, but preferably use the feature request support um, so that the other people can vote on it, and that will really help us 
know what, what genuinely is needed from people. All right, what you'll see in the latest release is uh, when I go into leads now, um, it has these colored tabs on the right hand side. So they weren't there before, and it's very difficult, I guess, to see what you had done with the lead, unless you knew that you dealt with it. Um, it was hard to see what had been done. Now, you've got full visibility of exactly what's happened to that lead so far, what stage it's up to, whether you've created a job or an invoice from it. And then, if you do want to go and see the full history, as we showed this morning, when you go to the bottom of the page, a history is being maintained of everything that's happening to that lead as it moves through the process. So it's um, a really good way of tracking all of the recorded conversations, the conversion rates, everything else is being uh, tracked in that history. So that's one of the, I guess, the big updates. And that, that goes all the way through, not just with leads, but when you go into um, uh, quotes, same functionality on the right-hand side, showing you at a glance exactly where that uh, quote is up to and what's happened with it, in addition to the filtering at the top. And then uh, the same thing with invoices, obviously, um, whether it's paid or unpaid and its status uh, on the right-hand side. That's also being reflected in the management portal. So when you're looking at leads or you're looking at quotes, um, the link to the, the job or the invoice or the quote that's been generated from them and also the link to the initial lead is all being tracked within the portal as well. So a whole lot, a whole lot more tracking, but more importantly, just so that you can see this stuff really quickly, looking at it and know what's there to be triggered. In terms of the new features coming out for November, um, scheduler in the app is obviously the huge one for, for a lot of you, so that you can use all of the scheduling features from the app. You don't have to use the management portal. So you can just touch on day, week, or month mode, touch on the spot that will create a job for you in that time slot. You can create jobs for yourself and for other users. You can view other users' schedules within the business. So you've just got so much more functionality within that. The ability to add attachments to quotes and invoices is due for 30 November. Um, so again, if you've got marketing material or agreements or um, other documents that you want to automatically attach to your quotes and invoices, that will be available. The ability to add photos and signatures to quotes and invoices, 30 November, really, really good one. We've seen lots of opportunities to make that better, um, covering your backside, basically, particularly on quotes, the customer signatures on that quote, it's a, it's a done deal. Um, photos obviously tell a million words, so by adding before and after photos to an invoice, just adds that extra um, feature. Also, the ability to add one-off comments to quotes and invoices, that's a 30 November uh, improvement. So I, I mentioned some examples earlier, but you, you do the standard run job with the standard invoice on a particular day, you might be charging more or less, and you can just put a one-off comment in that invoice to say why, um, or you can identify a future piece of work. Yeah, so I'm doing the job today, I'm going to invoice the normal amount, but by the way, your hedges need doing next, next visit, that sort of comment. Um, in addition to the job notes and the CRM notes, we're also going to have location notes. So when you set up a location, you will be able to add location specific notes to that location and they will appear in the job as well. Okay, so you dispatch a job. When you open that job uh, for that location, you'll be able to look at the specific location notes as well as the normal job notes and CRM notes. Um, Email templates will be available within the app as they are in the management portal. Um, and that's it for November. So a lot of that has come from Jim's feedback. Obviously we're taking feedback from all clients all over the place, but uh, I would say probably 90% of those changes uh, are due to feedback from Jim's. Um, so everything that we've done in the October release, all of this is going on top of that for November. In terms of the December 31 release, we are adding the run sheet feature so that you will be able to generate and print uh, run sheets, which will, can be distributed to staff. The My Old Essentials integration CRM, the credit note facility, so you'll be able to add credit notes and record future payments that you can offset invoices against. 
and the tasks module will be added to the app as well. So when you're creating tasks for an individual, those tasks will appear in the diary of the app as well as the portal. So a uh, huge amount of work. I know it sounds fairly straightforward, but when you've got to release it in Apple, Android, uh, Windows portal, um, it's all considerable development. But um, I'm hoping, again, that will all make it much easier for you guys in particular to be using when you're out in the field. I think that's probably a good coverage of, of the November and December uh, feature releases. Thank you, Matt. Any comments or questions regarding the enhancements? Mr. Marcel. Oh, yes, okay. That's a, that's a November release as well. So, uh, uh, Marcel is on his app. He has quotes, invoices, and expenses. He doesn't have payments. So the payments is a record of all payments received. So you, if you want to check that, you've got visibility of all payments received as well. So when you take payments from an invoice, um, obviously uh, the invoice will show as paid, but if you want to jump in and check payments received, this is where you'll do it. So I haven't even mentioned that, but it's done already, as you can see, it's in my app. Um, that will be available soon, and, there's, and you can swipe from the right to either undo the payment or open the invoice that it's related to. Um, I like that under payment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. It's amazing what excites different people. Uh, okay. All right, so yes, that's another one for, for the next release. So yeah, as you can see, it's done already. I just forgot to mention it. Excellent. Any more questions from the webinar or from on site related to enhancements? Going once. If not, we'll pull up the uh, PowerPoint screen mat and share with the folks at home uh, just on support structure. Okay, uh, I think uh, this is becoming uh, pretty self-evident at the moment, but uh, uh, from Jim's point of view, uh, we've assigned a couple of power users. Uh, the first one is Mark, who's sitting in the room with us, uh, doing all the hard work on the webinar side. And the other one is Joel, who's currently uh, heading up the uh, documents and compliance team. Um, so both of them have uh, spent some time training. Uh, we are not the first point of call because we only know enough to be dangerous. Um, so if you do have specific questions, then um, the formatized team are obviously really the gurus. But if you can't get through to formatize and you do need a hand, well, you know where we live. Okay, so uh, Mark, Joel, or failing that, get in touch with myself. Okay, so uh, Joel uh, Kleber, uh, Mark Laurel and Barry Moon. Um, in terms of the franchise solution since we rolled out, I'll hand over to Matt. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of the features that we've built for the solution in general and for franchisees uh, is also very relevant to the franchisor's business. Um, particularly, obviously, the the financial side with the integrations to the accounting software, but also in terms of the sales pipeline. So uh, a potential new franchisee uh, is, a, is a potential sale, if you like. And so you can manage that relationship from, from start to finish. You can move them through the pipeline as their interest grows. You can trigger automated email communications to them as they move through the different stages until they finally convert to become a, a franchisee and a, a valued customer. Um, a lot of the activity in terms of regular uh, calls to uh, franchisees can be managed through the system as well and recorded so that the monthly catch-up calls or whatever you might do can can be acted from a, a swipe and call from the contacts uh, and all of that being time date stamped and, and uh, available for, for lookup. Um, but I guess the biggest part of it is that it helps the franchisors understand the solution as well. So when the franchisees are asking questions or, or want some help, 
if they're franchisors are using it themselves and, and uh, seeing the benefits and understanding how it works, it'll, it'll just make that whole flow and adoption and growth um, so much easier. The franchisees got yet another point of contact to help them grow it. So um, Jim himself is very keen to see this rolled out to franchisors uh, as soon as possible, particularly to help with the, the automation of a lot of that stuff that's just very mundane and time consuming. So we are actively developing that to roll out as soon as possible. Thank you, Matt. Um, next slide, uh, structure and support, application specific support uh, is done directly via corporatize. And for those of you who can spot the deliberate mistake in the uh, URL, um, that means that no tickets are going through to corporatize. Um, so it's support, H-E-P-P-O-R-T, at F-O-R-M-I-T, I Z E, we're missing an I there, dot com. So uh, support at formatized dot com. And uh, account creation and data transfer support is done by Infotech. So infotech at gyms.net. So if anyone needs help, point them in that, those uh, directions, please. And the other good thing is um, you can now self sign up to formatize uh, for gyms online. This is a really simple uh, process. Follow the prompts, uh, four step. Uh, process there, and um, you'll get an email with login details uh, to your email ID from supported formatize. So that's uh, all pretty straightforward. Um, we've had another couple of questions on notice, more generic questions, uh, specifically, Matt, what happens if the server crashes? I guess there's two, two servers involved in this kind of process. There's the, the gym server, which uh, they obviously look after and manage and, uh, and do that. Uh, the other side is, is ours. Um, the, there is no one server for starters, so you can relax a little bit. There's, there's a few involved. But we are supporting clients all over the world from uh, the, the federal government through to state governments and, and councils and many, many large organizations uh, and small. So. The, the system is very robust. We have never gone down um, in nearly six years. Um, our only downtime has ever been scheduled and notified support time. So it's, a, it's an extremely robust solution. Um, the information saves the device every 15 seconds. So it's, it's difficult to lose information. The only time that data can be lost really is if you're doing complex forms, um, uh, and you, you don't save it and you have missed that 15 second save window. That's pretty much the only time. Um, or you, you're saving documents without submitting them uh, and never submit them. There's a chance that that could be lost as well. But I think for most users that are using the CRM activity and the invoicing functionality, it's all happening instantly. It's all saving instantly. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing can ever happen. Um, You've got the ability to download CSV files of all of your data. You can do that whenever you want to using the reporting tool. So if you want that peace of mind and, and storing your data somewhere else, that's absolutely understandable. Um, that functionality is there. It's your data, it's not ours. Um, you can download it and do what you please with it whenever you want to. Um, in terms of losing your phone, um, I'm not exactly sure what the issue there is apart from perhaps losing your data. Um, there is a little bit of a security risk, I suppose, that if you if you don't have any kind of login to your phone or your tablet, so anyone can just pick it up and you don't have the security logins on that. Um, if you have set the uh, setting on the front page to remember me, remember the password, then um, that will automatically enable anyone to log in to if they can get into your phone. So just disable that if you don't want to use it. It's there as a convenience so you can just quickly log in every time without entering your login detail. Um, but that is that is a potential security risk if someone can get into your phone. They can theoretically get into your account if, if that's turned on. Um, if you do lose your phone, obviously using cloud technology and cloud storage, um, everything is being stored in the cloud anyway. So it's not device dependent. It's not like you're saving it to your hard drive on your computer and if you lose your computer, if you've lost your hard drive, it's actually being stored um, separately from the device. So um, you will lose very little information if you lose your phone. Uh, 
Um, we've got a couple of questions come through via the webinar. At the franchise law level, will information input be informatised to both existing franchisees and franchisee inquiries then also appear into FMS or will it require a separate update somehow? So uh, very similar to the discussion we had this morning about the leads and pickups. Um, so uh, there is no link back up from former ties to FMS at the moment. Uh, it's not in the development pipeline at the moment. However, it's something we need to discuss. Uh, and I think well, there's been some discussion already. Yeah, I think that sums it up. I think there's lots of benefits of um, information being entered in the form of time pushed back to FMS to, to save double time and re-entry. So um, we're very aware of it. It's just a matter of, of having Jim's scope before us so we know what's required and, and getting it done. Uh, next question. Uh, will you be able to send statements from formatize? So I'm presuming financial statements. Yeah, there's no facility at the moment to do that. Obviously, it's all individual invoices that then go into the accounting software normally, and then the monthly invoices, if they exist, are, they, sorry, are, are sent from there. So it's not currently on the development pipeline. Uh, what happens to formatize in a power blackout at the formatize office? Are there multiple servers in different states or locations? Power blackout. Yes. So um, none of the servers are in the service form size office. There, there is Melbourne and Sydney backups in Australia. Um, for global clients, we have a, an international architecture. But for you guys, you're all sitting on the Australian servers, which are hosted in Sydney and Melbourne and backed up against each other. And let's move forward to the next slide. Uh, is there a plan to allow notes to be written on the invoice before sending detail work or suggested work opportunities? I think that was included in the release for November. Correct. Uh, move forward to the next one, please. Uh, when clients take multiple past services, formatise need to be able to credit the past services with the value of the payments received, not just credit one large payment to one service. So it's about crediting past services. Um. Yes. When a payment is received for multiple invoices, um, you can go into each of those invoices and assign payments to them. So you've raised three invoices for a client through the, through the month. They've paid you for all three at the end of the month. At the moment, you need to go into each individual invoice and assign the proportion of that payment to that invoice. I think, I think that's what's being asked. Yep. Thank you, Matt. A uh, question from the webinar, when we get a lead from an existing customer or friend, either by SMS or email, is there a functionality to upload details into the Formatize app? Uh, there's not yet, but that is certainly something we're looking at as well. A little bit of smart uh, transfer, so you can recognize certain fields within the app or email and use that to create um, a lead without too much double entry, but not currently available. Uh, any further questions from the floor? Yes, sir. Just a question in regards to Section Zero. Um, I have two territories, and I was wondering whether we could have one starting invoices that say a thousand, and the other one starting at three thousand. That cause any grief with zero, or would it? So you have two. Okay, two codes. So you have two territories, two franchisee codes. And uh, you want to invoice with different invoice preferences. Can, I, can we come back to that? I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, how, how well it will work. Yeah, just make sure there's no confusion between. So I think yeah. we need to check on that for you. So let's take that one uh, offline then and uh, come back to you. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the last slide. Uh, look, I think we answered this question this morning. Uh, will gyms be changing formatized? Sorry, we didn't ask this, ask this one. We answered the next one. Um, can my franchise or anyone else see my information? Um, the answer is, uh, or the real question is, can anyone see my financials? And the answer is definitely not. We don't want to see them 
from a gym's point of view, but one discussion at the moment is uh, should we be able to share operational data? We had comments earlier about conversion rates, um, how to help people with uh, efficiency and productivity through training. So that's something we're discussing, but at the moment uh, it's not the case. And then the uh, last question uh, is, uh, will we be chopping and changing in the near future? Um, Formatize is the partner of choice. We've entered into this relationship uh, for a long-term relationship. So, uh, of course, anything can happen, but uh, the answer is no, we won't be chopping and changing. Any more questions? Webinar? Question myself. Um, it's about the CSV report builder. CSV report builder. I There's quite a lot in, in formatize itself outside of the CRM that we haven't even touched on today. Um, I can show you very quickly how it works if it's something that you want to spend a moment on now. Yep. Okay. Well, we know you heard that Marcel said he wants to stay longer to look at the CSV builder. <laughs> so, um, the CSV report builder is only related to submitted forms, okay? So it's only if you're using the form functionality for whatever, and, and you can build forms. We haven't touched on form building either, Barry, which we're going to look at today. Um, our, our background is actually forms. That's where the business started many years ago, you know, providing mobile forms to fill information in and, and submit it back, and then it, it, that data will be transferred into wherever it's got to go. So. But the functionality is essentially the same as as in the reporting section of CRM. So the idea is that we, we will give you tabs for everything that's being collected in the CRM, and then you can go and create and filter that data to create a CSV report on whatever you want. In terms of how it works, it's, it's basically that. But if I go into Tools and then the CSV report builder in the top, and please bear in mind it's only relevant if you're using Forms. So that the pest control building inspection, if they're using our forms, I know pest control reports will be. It enables you, if you imagine a form, and it might range from a travel expense or a, a request leave, a annual leave request or, or whatever, um, can all be converted into forms. And the forms will sit in the form section of the app, which we didn't even go into today, um, because it's only relevant to people that want to use it. But just to quickly show you how it works, I can go in here and I select a form which has got some data in it. Um, it's our demo account, so goodness knows what you'll see. Um, but let's use a timber pest inspection report as a pest controller, for example. You select the date range that you want to look at and hit update. Hopefully it's got some information in here. There's only one record. And what it does is bring in all of the metadata from that form, okay? So a building inspection report might be 30 pages with lots of individual fields of information being collected, but it's difficult to report on when it's just converted into a PDF. A PDF is just a document. You can't extract what we call the metadata, the individual field data out of it. So this report enables you to create an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file on any single field of information that's being collected in any of your forms. Okay. So if I hit a drop down for one of these, if you imagine these, this top heading is like the, the column headings of your spreadsheet, the little red cross just means you can delete that field if you don't want it. But if I click on it, I can see every single field available in that form. And so I can start to create a spreadsheet with exactly the column headings and data that I want to look at. Okay. So an example might be if you're using chemicals and you're using our, um, chemical application report, then you can go in here and within a, a few clicks create a report that shows how much chemical of a certain type you used in a certain period or how many, um, how many uh, leads did you receive from this type of customer or how many jobs did I do in this region or anything, anything that's being collected in any single field of any single form, you can go away and build a report on. And once you've got that custom layout right as, as how you want it, rather than having to do it all again, you can just go in and call it, create a new preset template and call it whatever you like. And so the next time you come in, you just select the date range, select the preset template, and the whole report lays out ready for you to, to do very quickly. Okay. 
I'll touch on the form builder super quickly just so you've got an idea of where it is. By the way, of course, top right hand corner of the CSC report builder page is the video icon, so go, go and watch that if you want more information. The form builder, go to forms, build edit forms. This is where you can build your own forms on literally anything that you want. Ah, it's all included. I'm out of this one, so I can't do it now. Um, we'll show you a separate video on the form builder if you want to see it, but there is videos all the way through to show you how that works. All right. Okay. Any more questions from the floor? I've got a couple through from the webinar. Um, so, a question from Greta. Going back to the question about multiple payments, if a payment is reported in an accounting package against these invoices, will this sync properly in quantities? Uh, going back to the question about multiple payments, sorry, payments to the question about multiple invoices. If a payment is reported in the accounting package against these invoices, will it sync properly in quantities? Uh, yes. Yes, if, if an invoice is created in either zero or former time, it will be automatically set as unpaid. When it is paid, either by reconciled through zero or checked off as paid within form files as a, as a payment, e either way it will reconcile being a paid invoice. Any more questions from the floor? Any more questions from the webinar? Going once, going twice. So that concludes today's formatized training. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll be sending out a recording once we've edited uh, over the next six years. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.